Howdy. Today on Zeman Outdoors, we're going to be going through part four of my 2020 heavy aero build. I do apologize for how long it took me to get this last video out. It's not because it's just taking me that long to get these arrows set up and everything. It was time consuming and I ran into some issues. I've just been pretty busy getting the property set up and getting some other videos out the door and just getting ready for the hunting season in general. I also wasn't super sure how I wanted to present this video because I did run into a decent amount of issues. I reached out to Troy, the ranch fairy, and you know talked through some of this stuff with him and ended up doing a little bit of tinkering. And so it's kind of hard to piece all that together without kind of going through it the way I'm going to go through it today. I'm going to start by showing you all some video clips of me getting the arrows knock tuned and getting everything set up. And then I'll jump in from time to time to explain a few things. All right, guys, so I'm sitting here about five yards. I have all 12 of my arrows laid out here. I'm going to start with the first arrow, knock tune that one completely, get to the second arrow, so on and so forth. And again, I'm, I'm on my knees so that I'm at a level playing field with the target over here and my arrows aren't coming in at an angle, so hopefully that gets me my best results. Although the wind just picked up a little bit, so I'm gonna have to maybe clamp down my paper to make sure that it, it doesn't move any. So I'm getting a pretty low tear. I mean, it's not terrible, but I'll spin the knock about a quarter of the way. And we'll see how that is. So I've taken two more shots, still similar tear, so I'm going to turn it another quarter. So that one was even worse. So let's uh, rotate it again. Okay, right, well, none of those really looked great. Actually, the best one looked to be where I had it. So I'm gonna go back there and take another shot. So for this arrow, everything is really looking the same. They're kind of low and a little bit to the right tears, which is a little frustrating as this is about the same weight as the test arrow. So I'm going to set this arrow aside, go ahead and pick up my second one and see if it's any different. Maybe it's just the arrow. If I have issues with the second one, what I'll do is I'll go get my test arrow again and take some shots with that as well. And honestly, it could just be me. I could be doing something a little bit different in my form that's causing these issues, but that'll kind of help figure out what the real issue is here. All right, guys, so I shot another arrow and had similar results. So I went and pulled the one I tested with, which is just the basic insert with a 300 grain tip here. And I'm getting a bullet hole with that. Um, so I don't think it's a form issue. My guess is it's you know maybe it's just a knock issue so I'm gonna keep rotating the knock a little bit on this first arrow until I can get as close to a bullet hole as possible. Definitely a little frustrating it's hot out and I haven't even gotten through one arrow in, in an hour so just kind of shows you know it takes time and, and effort to get your arrows the way you want them. Um, but I'm just gonna keep shooting and I'll turn you on when I figure something out. Alright so just a little update here I've uh shot every arrow at least two or three times and a couple arrows I've turned an eighth of a turn every single time to try and 
see if it was a knock issue, but you can see, you know, everything's got this same consistent pattern. And then I go back to my test arrow a few times and it's almost an exact bullet hole. So I guess I'm a little frustrated with the results right now. My only thought potentially is uh, the length of the arrow maybe, because this is, you know, when I used the 300 grainer, it's another inch longer. So maybe I should have gone an inch longer with my arrow. So as you can see, I had some issues with the knock tuning process. I really think the biggest issue was the length and I wasn't about to go out and buy 12 brand new arrows, get them cut an inch longer, redo all the inserts and everything because I just don't have the time or the money to do that. And so what I ended up doing for these arrows is I tinkered quite a bit with the first two or three arrows I had. You know, I moved the rest left, right, up, down. I changed my draw weight a little bit and, and I got pretty close to where I had about maybe a quarter inch to a half inch low tear. I'm a little OCD, so I was still a little frustrated that I wasn't getting a perfect bullet hole. And that's when I really reached out to Troy and kind of just talked to him and, and he kind of just walked me down the path of, look, you're not going to get it perfect. Every bow, every arrow, every shooter is different. If you have a slight tear, you know, it, it's going to be okay. And so I, I kind of went through that a little bit more, and I'll show you some clips that I took with my phone while I was going through that process. All right, so it's pretty toasty out here, but I got fletchings put on three of the arrows, um, and I just took some shots. And it's pretty impressive what fletchings will do to an arrow. I'll show you all real quick. Let me turn you around. So if you look, those three arrows were from that group. So at 10 yards, I was about eh, probably half an inch to an inch low tear. Add fletchings on and you have perfect bullet holes. So I'm not trying to say that you shouldn't try and get a perfect bullet hole, but if you're having issues like I am where you're just slightly off or, you know, not quite there with your bear shaft, you know, throw a fletching on, see how it works. What Troy also suggested was go ahead and put a broadhead on there take a broadhead shot and take a just a fletch shot and see where the arrows end up. Obviously they should be pretty much spot on. Shoot your broadhead first so you don't cut up your arrow. Um, but so that's what I'm gonna try next is I'm gonna get my block out here and I'm gonna put a broadhead on it and take a couple shots with the broadhead and follow up with a fletched arrow after that just to kind of see where everything stands. And if I'm getting my fletched arrow to hit on point with that fletched broadhead. I'm gonna pretty much call it it on this uh, experiment and start testing the rest of the arrows and picking out my five or six hunting arrows for the year. So one thing to note is I moved my rest a little bit here, up and down and left and right. And I've definitely noticed that my pins are not shooting straight. I'm definitely pushing it a little bit left. So before you go out and start shooting broadheads, go ahead and sight your field tips in at maybe 20 yards, 10 yards, something, just so you know you're gonna be hitting the target. All right, so I shot a broadhead and a field point. This first one is the broadhead. The second one down here is the field point. You can see they're pretty close. I'm gonna do a little bit more testing and, and see how it goes. So you can see from these clips here is that my broadhead was tracking pretty close with my field point. I tested this out at 20 yards. I also went back to 30 and tested it out. I really don't plan on shooting over 30 yards, so I didn't go any further than that at this point. But I just wanted to kind of go through this because I think you see a lot of these videos of people doing this process. Even Troy's videos kind of go through it, but you know, they all get these perfect bullet holes and they say the process works perfectly and blah 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 and just kind of makes you feel like you're doing something wrong. Um, but since I've posted a few of my videos, I've had quite a few people reach out to me and thank me for kind of showing the details of it just so that they can see there is more than, hey, you're just gonna go shoot it, tinker a few things around, and you're gonna have a perfect bullet hole. Didn't quite work like that for me, and I kind of wanted to show you all my process and kind of some of the things I did to make that work. So bottom line is, you know what? Don't pull your hair out about a small tear. I think the last couple of videos Troy has done has even shown that kind of step where, you know, he talks about, look, it's not going to be perfect for everyone. 
and he kind of walks through some of the troubleshooting and some of the issues that he's seen people have as well. In the last video, I talked about doing some clocking and showing you how I clocked an arrow to decide whether I wanted a left or right offset or helical on my fletchings. And so I'm going to show a few clips of me doing that real quick. I just wanted to go into a little bit of how I pick whether I want a left or right offset on my fletchings. So I'm going to show you how I clock an arrow. I kind of already discussed this previously on whether I think you need to do it or not. But just so you have an idea how to do it, you take your bare shaft arrow I've got here, and we already have a mark on it for our Noctune here. If you don't already have that mark though, go ahead and put a mark on the top of the arrow. And you'll want to shoot into a block target so that the arrow doesn't move or adjust like it would in a bag target. So I've just got my block target set up here. I put it a little bit higher so that it's easier to shoot into. I'm going to be about three feet away, so not very far. You want to get the arrow just as it's coming out of the bow so you can see which way it turns. So we'll come up here and look at the arrow. And so you can see my mark here went left. And so you can tell that it's rotating left. So what I like to do is I'll take another shot or two into it. I want to make sure that I'm getting the same result over and over. So we come up and look at it. Again, our mark is to the left, which means the arrow is rotating to the left outside of the bow. Therefore, you'll want to put a left offset on your fletchings so you're not fighting the natural rotation of your bow. So that's all I really had today. I just wanted to show you all how I went through the final tuning and the issues that I ran into, how I clocked the arrow and got my arrows completely set up for hunting season. I appreciate everyone that tuned in for the whole series. If you all enjoyed these videos, please subscribe. I'll be doing this again next year, I'm sure, and hope you all enjoy my hunting videos. I also want to thank Troy the Ranch Fairy for all his support going through this process. Without him, I don't think I'd be where I was with my arrows or as comfortable as I am with my setup. I also think he's doing wonders for archery and the hunting industry as well. So Troy, thanks for helping us out. Thanks for joining me today on Zeman Outdoors. Happy hunting.